Hi, I'm Kamali, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Breakup Facebook, the plan to take apart the thing he built, shakes up Silicon Valley. It's time to go back to the moon, this time to stay. The world's richest man plans to make more money out of people paying to go to the moon. And Gil, the first and last of her name, we show you the 15-year-old cat that guards the Hagia Sophia. And to top of our news feed, Facebook breakup. One of the founders of the social network has written an op-ed in the New York Times calling for Facebook to be broken up. Chris Hughes uses the newspaper to lay out all his reasons for his explosive plan. And it's tough stuff. Remember, this guy started Facebook with Mark Zuckerberg in their dorm room at Harvard when they were friends and they continue to be friends. So coming from him, this whole thing has got to sting. When a single company dominates any market, they become susceptible to abusing their power. Social networking is like most other American industries. There used to be plenty of healthy competition, but now, Many industries are controlled by just one or two companies. I often hear people say, I'm shutting down my Facebook account. Thank God for Instagram. Not realizing that Instagram is owned by Facebook. People are powerless in this situation because there's nowhere else to go. And Facebook has replied through a statement it gave to the website The Verge. It basically says, thanks buddy, but we know what we're doing. It does say though that they're open to new rules for the internet, which is kind of interesting. Since it was written by Britain's former Deputy Prime Minister, Nick Clegg, who is now Facebook's Vice President of Global Affairs and Comms. We used to call him Calamity Clegg in the UK back in the day. There are two reasons to separate, separate them out. One is to stop the kind of monopolistic control over people's activities. Um, and the other is to, 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 um, to stop the data being shared so that we get in the kind of, the benefit they get from having all these different things that they can profile us that much more and they can target that much more accurately. Um, if we prevent the data being shared at the same time as preventing the control being shared, then we potentially get the best of best of both worlds, and he potentially gets um, he loses the, the the real strength of the systems that he has, which which would be good for the consumer, and in the end, it would be good for our kind of democratic systems too. It actually requires the, um, the companies to structure their data in a way that it can be moved, to make it so that we can see what the data is, and then the data can be moved. And at the same time as moving, it can be erased from the original. It's not like you have your personality on Facebook, you have it also on Instagram. Then you would have the Facebook stuff deleted, now that is something that, some, that people like Zuckerberg are seriously afraid of because it means people can really move away from his empire. It's a difficult thing to find a model that will be both profitable and positive. And, and this is part of the reason that, that they've been so unwilling to regulate Facebook and Google, um, and to a certain extent Amazon, though not, not quite to the same extent, um, because they've seen them as growing, as providing employment, as providing innovation. So they've got to find a balance. It's really hard to do. The trouble is at the moment there's a bit of a tipping point because there's so much pressure on these, these organizations. And it's also potentially true that there could be more money made overall if you break things up. In general, competition rather than, rather than a monopolistic practices is seen to be the way to get a market to thrive and to make more money. The monopolies as they exist are not necessarily a positive thing um, economically, let alone for a tax, tax purposes, which is their, their other motivation. All right, let's take a look at some of the other things that of course are right on social media. Now, BTS have offered pre-registration for a mobile game called BTS World. It's already a top trend thanks to some textbook marketing by the people who run the biggest band on the planet. The game has few details, but it seems like an RPG where you get to manage the Bangtang boys and take them from obscurity to ubiquity. Definitely one for the fans. Now, uh, the 
the film Pokemon the Detective series has been released and uh, it seems as if it's leaked on the internet. But when you actually click on the link, you're taken to a one hour, 45 minute video of Pikachu dancing. Some expert trolling from Ryan Reynolds and the guys behind the movie, Warner Brothers Studios. I Don't Care, a song by Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber has been released. It's a top trend on Twitter, I Don't Care, and top of the iTunes streaming charts, I Don't Care. The commercial space race took a big step forward for mankind with an announcement from the richest man on this planet, and if he gets his way, the next planet, and the next, and the next. Let me show you something. Amazon tycoon Jeff Bezos says he's going to send a spaceship to the moon, a spaceship the size of a small house. This is Blue Moon. This is an incredible vehicle, and it's going to the moon. The unmanned, reusable Blue Moon spaceship will take equipment and eventually humans to our nearest galactic neighbor. Now's come the time for us to make the next giant leap. The American government has plans of its own. Washington says U.S. astronauts will be on the moon by the end of 2024. And Bezos says he can help. Vice President Pence just recently said it's the stated policy of this administration and the United States of America to return American astronauts to the moon within the next five years. I love this. It's the right thing to do. And for those of you doing the arithmetic at home, that's 2024. And we can help meet that timeline, but only because we started three years ago. It's time to go back to the moon, this time to stay. The world's richest man has an ambitious vision for mankind's future in space. If we're out in the solar system, we can have a trillion humans in the solar system, which means we'd have a thousand Mozarts and a thousand Einsteins. This would be an incredible civilization. His company Blue Origin is not the only private company aiming for space. He's duking it out with other obscenely wealthy individuals who also have their eyes on the stars. Elon Musk and his firm SpaceX, who welcomes the competition for their run to the moon. And Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic, which is in direct competition with Blue Origin for what they see as the next profitable frontier the market for suborbital space tourism. All right, let's spin around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Friday. Now, eight out of the 28 member states in the European Union have signed on to make sure that 25% of the EU budget is spent to fight climate change. France, Belgium, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, Denmark and Sweden all say they want the bloc to have zero emissions by 2050. Clearly, though, not everyone is keen on saving the planet. Germany, one of the biggest polluters in the bloc, hasn't joined. Chelsea Manning has been released from prison in the United States. The former soldier was arrested in Iraq in 2010 after she leaked thousands of documents revealing how the US killed, kidnapped and tortured people around the world. The documents she took ended up being published by WikiLeaks. Now, when Chelsea Manning was released, she was also served with another subpoena to appear before a grand jury next week. That jury could decide to send her back to prison as she has thus far refused to discuss her connection with WikiLeaks. Twitter's released its latest transparency report and it shows it removed 160,000 accounts that were promoting terrorism between July and December of last year. That's actually down from 200,000 accounts removed in the previous six months. Twitter says it's because it's taking tough action. I say it's because terrorism sympathizers are finding other platforms on which to promote their hate. But keeping them off Twitter means they're being denied oxygen, which is a good thing. Now, PUBG, one of the most popular mobile games on the planet, has had a remake for the Chinese market. Uh, Player Unknown Battleground has been relaunched and it's in line with socialist core values, traditional Chinese culture and moral rules. The game's a first-person shooter where the objective is to kill people. It's been renamed Game of Peace and when you shoot someone in the Chinese version, they don't bleed to death. As you can see, they wave goodbye. 
And in Germany, they've started testing an electrified highway for trucks. It's on the autobahn outside of Frankfurt and will charge hybrid vehicles as they move along from this footage. You can see it's pretty cool looking. The trial is run by the engineering mega company, Siemens. And last stuff, a special animal's doing stuff, and this one is making sure one of the most famous buildings in the world stays safe. Here's Errol, enjoy. Hey, where is she? Have you seen her? Hey, Have you seen her? Where is she? It's been a church for almost a millennia then a mosque for about 500 years, and a museum for 84. But for the last 15 years, it's been the home for quite the curious creature. At first, she was named Gri, which means gray in Turkish, but because of her squinty cross-eyed cuteness, her name evolved to Glee and has stuck ever since. Have you seen her? Where is she? You haven't seen her? Have you seen her? Have you seen her? Do you know where she is? There she is. Her name is Glee, and we found her protecting one of the side entrances of Hagia Sophia. Glee was born here in 2004, and she's been living inside Hagia Sophia with her sister named Kazum ever since. Her name, Glee, means union of love, which is quite befitting for her perfect character. Because you bring love to everybody. You bring unity and love to everyone. She's so famous that she even has her own Instagram account and a huge following. She first busted out onto the scene when she was petted by Barack Obama and President Recep Tayyip Erdogan during their visit to this beautiful museum. She does a great job protecting, but also snuggling. stone circles I'm sitting in front of is called the Omphalion. This is also known as the navel in Greek. This is the place where all the emperors were crowned. And this was also exactly where Glee was going to pass her seat down to the throne to her only child, Kadokuz. But after an unfortunate turn of events, Kadokuz was paralyzed and subsequently put down after being run over by a bus. So that leaves Glee as the final and last protector of Hagia Sophia. Glee was often found with a mouthful of feathers. She was so active that she was always hunting little birds throughout the museum. Through the narrow ramparts. Though Glee might have more innovative ways to access the upper floors, us humans only have one way up, and that's through these old stone ramps. You can see where Glee gets her positive catitude from. With views like this, it's so easy to be meow. Glee's also known for her exquisite taste in interior design. All of the walls of the Hagia Sophia, except for the ones covered by marble, are decorated with gold, silver, glass, terracotta, and colorful stone mosaics. Glee can also be seen gazing at one of the eight magnificent medallions you see behind me, which are known to be the biggest calligraphy panels in the Islamic world. I'm grateful that we got to see Glee on post, on duty, and we appreciate her being the regal feline and ultimate protector of Hagia Sophia. Till next time. Thank you, Errol, and of course, thank you, Glee. That's all from the Newsfeed team. Reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. You'll find me at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24-7 on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you like. Follow, subscribe, and add. See you again soon.